The latest film from the Russo brothers, The Gray Man, has dropped on Netflix. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your thoughts on the Russo Brothers' latest film, The Gray Man. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in the middle? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And with that said, let's get started talking about the film. And this to me is an interesting one because I think the biggest thing working against this movie are the expectations associated with the budget and the talent in front of and behind the camera. Because if you just took this as an action thriller, there's plenty of entertainment value to be had. But as soon as you give it a $200 million budget, the directors of Endgame, the writers of Endgame, and then Chris Evans and Ryan Gosling in front of the camera, as well as a bunch of other people like Billy Bob Thornton, who've been around for... 30 years in the business, as well as a bunch of up-and-comers like Anna de Armas, all of a sudden the expectations are much higher that this is going to transcend the action thriller genre, and that's not really what it does. This to me feels like if you had kind of a 20-year-old good action thriller script just sitting around and they decided to, to make it and for some reason decided to give it a $200 million budget. Just for no reason, like, eh, we could make it for 80 million. Let's just go ahead and make it for 200 million. And all of a sudden, the expectations are raised because the budget is so high. <laughs> That's what this movie is to me. Um, and you, you look at it, it, it's based off a book from 20 or 2009, and they've been trying to adapt it for over a decade now. I mean, there was a version with Brad Pitt and then Charlie's Throne. They were going to do some gender swapping in there. So they've been trying to adapt it for over 10 years. And finally, they decided to do it with the Russo brothers as one of their post endgame projects. And I think that just elevates people's expectations for what it will be. And I know that it did for me as someone that obviously loves the MCU, loves the Marvel movies. And I heard, of all, and you think, coming off Endgame, when you've made a movie that made $3 billion, and right before that you made Infinity War that made $2 billion, you know, you kind of can do whatever you want. <laughs> Every studio is willing to trust you with their big, gigantic project. And so they followed up with Cherry and this movie. <laughs> and... Uh, did I like the movie? Yeah, I had fun with it from beginning to end. I thought it was a blast. Do I think I'll remember it? Uh, you know, a month from now? Not really. I mean, I watched it two days ago and it's like, yeah, that was fun. What specifically was fun about it? I don't know. It's just like quick moving, charismatic leads. But on a plot level, it's, it's just another one of these movies about the guy with a certain set of skills that gets betrayed and he has to right the wrongs and someone's been kidnapped. And you get, it's, it's just a lot, a lot of the same stuff. And it's not a bad version of one of those movies. It's a good one. It's a good version of a throwback action thriller with a ridiculously high budget. <laughs> That's what the, it's just the whole thing kind of felt like that to me. So, you know, what, what was good about the film? Well, you know, because they have a ridiculous budget, everything feels kind of overblown. Everything gets to be the most over-the-top version of it. So it starts off with, like, the sequence where Ryan Gosling is supposed to go in and kill this guy. And there's, like, fireworks going off. There's fog everywhere. There's these crazy drone th shots. There's people everywhere. I mean, it's just, like a very expensive version of something that probably could have been a lot cheaper. And every scene feels like that. Like you're in the middle of the climax and I'm assuming this is a drone shot where we're like, we're on a castle and there's a fight taking place on the top of the castle mansion thing. And then we see them fighting and then we fly over and we see like carnage going on and we flap to our other leads who are somewhere else in the middle of this gigantic fight. And it's just like this sort of shot that looked like it was in camera, it didn't look like it was CGI, but massive in scope and size in a way that was just, got, I don't, just excessive. And I guess it's kind of fun to see a movie that's just this excessive, <laughs> but, but I don't know that it added to the film at all, but there's something about something this excessive. And there's like a, there's a fight on a plane. And part of what's going on in the fight is that they're like shooting like 
smoke grenades. And the whole time I was thinking if the smoke, the, the thing that makes this fight really difficult to shoot is that every single take, you have to clear all of the smoke out of the set, reset everything. And so that's a little detail that makes for a much longer and more expensive shoot just so that you can have the fog, the smoke from the grenades adding to the effect. But every take, you have to reset everything with something like that. This, that's the whole thing I kept thinking about. Every shot felt like that. Excessively expensive in a way that I can appreciate that you're just throwing money at this thing. I'm not sure that it added to the movie. Didn't detract. It didn't hurt the experience for me. But it was just amusing to watch them just burning through money on this film. Uh, other fun things in here. Ryan Gosling doing something very mainstream. He's one of these actors that's been around a long time. Typically, it seems like he does a lot more. He doesn't seem as interested in leaning into the mainstream as much. And so he, he's done high profile projects, but he doesn't do a lot of things that are just this crowd pleasery, mainstream popcorn entertainment. And he, he's charismatic. He's fun. He's got a dry sense of humor. And so watching him in fights, beating the crap out of people, I'm all on board for it. They announced a sequel. I'm totally there. Excited, pumped to see more of this world, more of Ryan Gosling fighting people. And it, I mean, he, he commits to roles. And so, I mean, you could see he was the guy in a lot of those fight sequences, doing, learning the choreography, going for it. That was a lot of fun. And then the flip side to that, uh, Chris Evans playing hard against Captain America type. And so if you remember Chris Evans' career pre-Captain America, he played a lot of these douchebag roles. Like the first thing I saw him in was not another teen movie where he's playing the high school douchebag. And then he's Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four, kind of the douchebag. So when he was cast as Captain America, I was pretty skeptical about the casting because he was more known for playing these types of people than someone as wholesome and old-fashioned as Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers was the transition, but that was 10 years ago or over 10 years ago now. And he was so good at Steve Rogers that now it's fun and interesting to see him going back to the stuff that he was playing in the first 10 years of his career. And so he's just playing such a douchebag, such like a literal sociopathic person that's horrible. But anytime someone is just allowed to be that crazy, that awful, there's a lot of fun in that. And so that's kind of what he gets to play in in this in this film. And, and so just a big part of what elevates this movie is the cast. And yeah, yeah, Billy Bob Thornton in there playing more of a mentor role. And he's done things like this before. He even was doing that 25 years ago in Armageddon. Um, but, you know, he, he's a he's an actual legitimate actor. Like he can play like trashy people like the guy he plays in Bad Santa and in um, Bad News Bears. But then he can play the mentor as well because he's just a legitimate actor that transforms to whatever role he's in. And so he, he, there's not a lot for him to do. He's just kind of being older mentor character. But even the way it was kind of designed was interesting because they they present him in a certain light at the beginning where you think he's kind of two-faced and betrayed his friend. And you quickly realize that's not even what it is. And that's not even the way it's portrayed by the character because it reveals information that makes you go, oh, OK, gotcha. Nothing terribly deep, nothing terribly memorable, but there's a little bit more to it than that. And then some up and comers was it Jessica Hennewick, uh, Anna De Armas are there. They're all fun. They're all fun to see them on screen. And I, I mean, I think that's the thing here is that it's superficially a movie that that entertains, where you've got lots of fast moving action sequences with the budget to be able to pull them off properly, with actors committed to the roles that are fun and charismatic to watch, with a slick, glossy production, lots of quips. It's all, it's quippy. It's the forced little everybody's uh, comedian type roles or type dialogue. It's that sort of thing. Um, but it fits the kind of movie that this is, which is superficial, but a lot of fun. I like these kind of movies, so I liked this movie. Uh, will I remember it, to, you know, a month from now? I don't know how much I'll remember it. I don't know when I'll rewatch it, but I had fun with it. And if they announce a second one, I'll be excited to check out the next one, which all this goes back to my starting point of if this was a movie whose budget was more, a more reasonable $70 million, not low budget by any stretch of the imagination, but more reasonable to the script that they had, 
I think that people would respond to it very differently. Like, yeah, it's a nice little throwback action thriller. But as soon as you attach the Russos, writers of Endgame, $200 million, you expect it to transcend the genre. And that's not what this does whatsoever. It's just one of these movies, an enjoyable one with fun leads. And especially with like Ryan Gosling, it feels out of like not what he normally does. So it's just fun to see him doing something like this. So if you're someone that doesn't really like throwback action movies, this one's probably not going to win you over. If you're someone that doesn't like generic action thrillers, probably not going to win you over. If you're someone kind of burned out on quippy dialogue and fast moving action sequences, probably not going to win you over. I like action movies. I like these types of action movies. So I had a lot of fun with it. Not memorable, not breaking new ground, but a fun time. Not at the movies because it's on streaming, but a fun little act throwback action thriller with a budget that is excessively large and leads to a bunch of scenes that have way more production value in ways that don't really add anything, but certainly were expensive shots. So overall, I think I'll give this movie a B, 7.5 on the entertainment scale. And it makes for an interesting weekend because I think that's the same score that I gave Nope which is a, is, has a B 7.5 for totally different reasons. It's a movie that is ambitious to a fault, and that's what holds it back. This one, it has a big budget, but it doesn't really have particular ambitions for that budget, and so it's just kind of a fun but generic, easy-to-watch film. Nope, it's like an ambitious but flawed film. And so same score, very different reasons. If you're tired of throwback action movies, sit this one out. If you like throwback action movies, check it out. You'll have fun with it. It's a good time. Let me know what you thought down below and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.